Question number eight. At the beginning of the 20th century, scientists could not explain how the sun produced its energy. However, the development of Einstein's equation E equals mc squared showed that energy could be released when mass is lost during nuclear fusion, where c is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Question A tells us that the luminosity of the sun is about 3.9 times 10 to the power of 26 joules per second. Use Einstein's equation to calculate the amount of mass lost each second by the sun. Well, the first thing to do here is not to worry about the fact that it's talking about each second. Just say in one second and then disregard all this talk about kilograms per second or joules per second. We can just deal with kilograms and joules. So our equation E equals mc squared. We can rearrange get mass equals energy divided by c squared. Our energy here is 3.90 times 10 power of 26 divided by which we have to be careful with brackets here, 3 times 10 to the 8 whole squared. Gives us an answer of 4.3 times 10 to the power of 9 kilograms, which means that the mass lost per second is 4.3 times 10 to the power of 9 kilograms per second. Part 2 says that the sun will be on the main sequence for about 10 billion years. Assume that the only loss of mass from the sun is due to the fusion of hydrogen, how much mass will the sun lose while it is on the main sequence? Well, we know how much mass it is losing every second. We now need to scale it up to work out how much mass will be lost in 10 billion years. So let's work out how many seconds that are in 10 billion years. Well, let's start with 10 to the power of 10 years multiplied by 365 days, or 24 hours each day, 60 minutes in each hour, 60 seconds in each minute. This sum here, 10 to the power of 10 years, so 365 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds will give us the total number of seconds in 10 billion years. It gives us 3.15 times 10 to the power of 17 seconds. And we know that each second, 4.3 times 10 to the power of 9 kilograms is being lost. So we need to multiply these two numbers together. So 4.3 times 10 to the power of 9 kilograms per second multiplied by 3.15 times 10 to the power of 17 seconds gives us 1.4 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. Part B is a tricky question here. Most of the energy produced in the sun is from the fusion of hydrogen into helium by the proton-proton chain. Don't worry if you don't know this in any detail, it gives it to you here. Proton-proton chain involves three stages. Part I says, how many positrons? It tells us here that a positron has the symbol E+. Plus. So again, don't worry if you don't know what a positron is. Are emitted to produce a stable helium-4 nucleus. Okay, so in order to produce in order to produce a helium-4 nucleus, you need to combine together two helium-3 nuclei to get a helium-3 nuclei. You need to combine together hydrogen-2 and a helium-1, and to get a, hyd a hydrogen-2 nuclei, it's formed by combining together two hydrogen-1 nuclei when that happens, that produces a positron. And because we need two of these helium-3s, that means that two positrons must have been formed in this process, one to create this helium-3 and one to create this helium-3. So the answer here is two. Part two says, why is a positron emitted in the first stage and not an electron? But a positron is the antimatter equivalent of an electron. It's exactly the same as an electron, uh, but it has a positive charge. Way to think about this is an electron is represented mass of zero, a charge of minus one. A positron is represented mass of zero, a charge of plus one. Just like the nuclear decay equations, 
you should know for unit P6. The mass and the charge need to be conserved. So the mass here, 1 plus 1, gives us 2 plus 0 for our positron. And when we look at charge, we have 1 plus 1 gives us 1 plus 1. If that was an electron, it wouldn't work because that would be that would give us a charge of zero on this side and two on this side. So the only way we can have charge conserved is by emitting a positron. So the correct answer here is that charge is conserved.